Hey guys, today we're here. We're going to teach you guys how to use the Hamden meter and how to do all your equal potential grounding in all your hospital facilities, CT rooms, cath labs, ORs, patient rooms, and let's get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to open up your case. Inside you have your MVO 1PB, which is your main meter for all your millivolt testing. Then you have your secondary attachment for your ohms testing. You have a short you have a long lead, you have a short lead, and you have a 30 amp twist lock in case you have any twist lock receptacles inside the suite. Some, most of the time you'll only see those in ORs. All right, we're gonna start with, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this foam piece off. Behind it, you're gonna have three laminated pieces of paper with directions on how to use each how to zero and calibrate, how to set up the meter for ohms tests, and how to do millivolt testing. We also have a directions book in case your OCK inspector wants to read the actual directions that come with the book on how to do it. And inside the manila envelope, we have all of our, we have your calibration certificate, which always make sure when you use the meter for the first time, you pull this out, you check the serial numbers right here to make sure that they match up with the piece of equipment that you're using on the MVO 1PB. The serial number is right here on the back, 9196, 9196. And on the MVO IT, you have 10, 10917, 10917. You also want to make sure that it's calibrated up to date and we're not past date. So right now it's September 16th of 2021 so we're good on this meter until may 31st of 2022 always check that before you start testing with that meter so that you don't have to do a test twice the next thing we have inside the book is inside the envelope is your sheet that you're going to write down everything that you're testing in the room i already pre-filled one out of this room basically you're going to write the facility name you're in Tampa general the room you're in, or the project name, CT1, the date that you're testing, who, then your name of who's testing, your company, and then you're gonna write which meter you use. So this one is a Hamden MVO 1PB. Write the serial number next to it, and then your attachment piece with your serial number next to that. You're also going to go room by room. If you have a bigger facility, you'll write each room that you have here on the left-hand side with what you're using your critical receptacles, C for critical, G for general, the number of receptacles for each one, and then the number of other. Number of other meaning floor duct, uh, the pedestal, the bed, the med gas equipment. So you count all those up and it equals your total number of other. <clears throat> so for in this room right here, we have 12 critical receptacles, four general receptacles, and 22 others. And we'll do our reading in millivolt first and then we'll do another reading in ohms now when you're testing you're just going to use the highest number that you've got from each reading and that's the number you're going to put down on your sheet for your maximum number of millivolts and ohms now we're going to learn how to calibrate and zero the mvo 1pb first thing you're going to do is make your right make sure your right hand knob is set on 50 millivolts take your left knob turn it to zero press the red button while holding the red button, you're gonna use the zero adjust knob and make sure the needle is sitting directly on zero. See, if I turn to the left, it falls below, turn to the right, it goes up, so you wanna make sure it's sitting right on zero. The next thing you're gonna do is turn the left knob to calibrate, press and hold the red button, and you're gonna calibrate the machine and make sure, use the calibrate adjust knob and make sure you're on 0.5 even with 0.5. Once you're done calibrating, you're gonna turn the left knob all the way to test. Make sure that the 50 millivolts is still set on 50 millivolts. You're gonna take the short lead and you're going to connect it to the common. You're gonna take your long lead and you're going to connect it to volts and ohms. And we're going to start 
millivolt testing. You're going to take the short lead and you're going to plug it into a your main outlet critical outlet. Make sure it's in there nice and snug, not loose. Sometimes in existing facilities, the grounds are loose. So when you stick them in, they'll kind of hang out. Make sure you get a nice good ground. If that does, if that's not working, make sure you have somebody sit there and hold it tight until they get that nice good ground. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your long lead and you're going to go around and you're going to start testing anything likely to become energized. You're going to test anything metal, meaning like right here on this pedestal, you're gonna to touch the other receptacles. Here we're not gonna to touch the critical because criticals obviously are already tied together, but we're gonna to touch the normal receptacles over here, metal screws on the pedestal over here. We're gonna to touch the metal screws underneath the bed. We're gonna to touch the bed. We're gonna to touch the floor duct. We're gonna test all of that and we're gonna find our highest reading. All right, while we're performing the millivolt test, Right now, we're, our main ground is plugged into a critical receptacle. So we're gonna go over, we're gonna touch all the grounds in the normal receptacles. Go ahead and hit the button. Good. And both grounds. So when you have a duplex like this, you wanna touch the top ground, test it. Then you wanna touch the bottom ground, test it. Now, while you're testing it, you have a second person over there touching the red button every time you test. I plug it in, he reads it, boom. And it's that person's responsibility to decipher what's the highest reading in the room. When you're doing millivolts, you don't want a reading anything over 20 millivolts. It's very rare that we get a reading any higher than that. But <clears throat> if, in case you do come across one, that's when we'll have to go through, pull out the receptacle. If it's a receptacle, make sure it's grounded properly, make sure the ground screw is tight. Or if you're touching you know, a metal object on a bet on this pedestal right here, we, we're going to touch that metal screw. He's going to test it. Yes. If it were to be bad, might, the screw might be loose. It might not be touching the metal all the way. So you want to pull out your screwdriver, tighten that screw down, make sure everything's nice and tight. So we're testing critical to normal and it will go through and we'll test everything, including in here we have floor duct. So we'll touch the, we'll test the floor duct, make sure that the floor duct's good. When the cover is on the floor duct, like on this side over here, when the cover is on, we'll touch the screws and make sure that the screws are good. Sometimes in an existing facility, the screws are all old and corroded, so you gotta get in there and just kinda jam down on the ground ring, make sure it's got a nice good connection. Once that's done, he'll test, we're good to go. On the bed itself, you're gonna wanna come down. You've got ground ports here on the back. You wanna make sure that you come and touch that ground port. Make sure that it's grounded properly. Good. good. Ready, test? You're good. Good. So you wanna make sure that's grounded. You'll come up underneath the bed here. There's a metal screw under here. We'll test it. You're good. Good. Come around anything that's likely to become energized. So in this case, the bed is likely to become energized because there's electric attached to the bed. So once we're done testing all of that, we'll come over to the meter. We'll disconnect from critical. We'll go and we'll plug into a normal receptacle. Make sure it's nice and tight, not loose. Chris will stand here to test it again and we'll do the same thing we just did based off the normal receptacle. All right guys, now we're gonna do the ohms test. So I disconnected the two leads and I'm gonna go back and make sure that we're still calibrated. So the first thing I'm gonna do is switch my left knob to zero, make sure we're still on zero. Switch over to calibrate, make sure we're still calibrated on 0.5, which we are. Then I'm gonna switch the meter all the way over to test. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull out the MVOIT. I'm gonna connect the MVOIT to the MVO1PB. Make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna take, it's got a 120 volt plug on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it into a live receptacle. Now we're plugged into a live receptacle. 
First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the switch right here and I'm going to flip it to calibrate. Now I'm going to press the red on button and I'm going to use the calibrate adjust knob to make sure that the needle is now calibrated to point 1. You only do you only calibrate it to point 1 when you're using the MVOIT and it's connected to the machine, connected to a 120 volt circuit. So now I'm calibrated to point 1. I'm going to flip the switch back down to test. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with millivolts. I'm going to connect the long lead to volts and ohms, the short lead to my common. I'm going to plug the common in to a critical receptacle. And I'm going to take the long lead and we're going to go and start testing critical to normal receptacles. I'll do the same thing we do with millivolts. I'll go to each receptacle, test each ground, find my highest reading, and then after I'm done with that, I'll go critical to all of my metal parts in the room, meaning same thing, floor duct, pedestal, anything likely to become energized. The boom, if there's a stairs light in the room, we'll hit the light in the middle. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna swap from over to normal and do the same exact test all over again. Switch back from normal to critical, test everything, and then go back around and test all the equipment. As, our, as we're going, we're gonna make sure that that needle does not go past point one. If it goes past point one, we have to do the same thing we did with millivolts, where we go in and we tighten down the screw, check the ground, make sure we got a good ground. All right, Chris, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, we're gonna test the floor duct first. You're good. Good? What was our reading there? Uh, under 0.05. Under 0.05. All right, good. Let's go over here and test the normal receptacles. You good? 0.05. 0 0.05. Under 0.05. Still good, same reading. Okay. Still good. All right, now we're going to touch all the grounds on the bed, on the pedestal here. 0.05. 0.05. All right, then we're going to come in here and we're going to get all these screws on the oxygen for the med gas. Good, 0.05. Good. We're going to touch all the screws, make sure we're clear. Good. We're going to touch the med, air, and you want to get the vacuum as well. Because that's in a wall or in a pedestal that has, that could become energized. So we always want to test that too. We're going to test the oxygen on the wall, hit the Good. screws. We're gonna hit all the screws, make sure that everything's clear. Good. Test? Yes, sir, good. Good. Yes, good. Good? Still good. And you're good. We've got a disconnect panel, so we're gonna to touch the screws on the disconnect. Good. 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 Yes, sir. Touch all the screws, touch all the metal parts, make sure you're good. We're gonna come over here to the bed to the rest of the machine. Make sure we test all the screws down in here. This part's plastic, but there's a metal screw right there. This part's heavy coat of paint, so you're not gonna get that, but you can come up and get the screw. Sometimes when you're doing this, the AKA inspector will ask you to scratch off a piece underneath if it's heavy covered metal like that and test it just to make sure if you're not getting a good ground reading. The top of this table is fiberglass, but the bottom is metal. So we'll check the bottom underneath, make sure we're good. We'll test anything that screws all down inside the equipment over here. So now we've tested everything on the stair slide as well. We'll test all the screws because, well, you know, the doctor could be using this light over the patient and this could become energized. So we'll test all the screws on here inside where they turn the light on and off. And that's it. Now. We will, from here, we'll transfer over to a, crit, to a normal receptacle and do the same thing. They good at 0.05. So it pings when you're not, and then once you're grounded, once, once you let off the ground when you're on ohms, you let off, it goes, it pings out. So once you're plugged into a good ground and we test, it's under 0.1, that's a good test. When you're all done testing and you've got done filling, and you're done filling out your paperwork, you take your paperwork, give it to your project manager so you can type it up for ACA. Put your certification back in the manila envelope. 
three directions back together lay them on top of the manila envelope with your booklet lay it in the top put your foam piece back in now put the meter back in the same way you found it mvopb there mvoit on this side long lead coiled up nice and neat laid in here short lead on this side and your 30 amp twist lock right next to it take your extra pieces of foam put in between the two pieces of equipment close it up set it back to the shop thanks guys appreciate it